All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, it's been a while to uh, Freshly Brewed. We are starting a new naming convention for our episodes now with the intent of being more consistent with these postings. Uh, we took a little bit of a break. I think I took a little bit of a break. And, um, you know, so basically... But we're back. I, I, yeah, we're back. And I think we're going to try to do this more regularly. But I think a lot of the problem was that, like... So there was a lot of lack of structure, but I think that worked for us and against us, right? Yes. Like, yeah. I think it worked for us because we like that. We kind of like the off-the-cuff nature of, of, of Fre Freshly Brewed, and we like being able to just, like, talk about... Like, we're more personal. I think this is a more personal podcast. I agree um, with that. But also, like, it left it hard to, like, really be... I think, it, I think it left it harder to be successful with it because we're not as structured, and we don't have... We're not as rigid. We don't have as many... Uh, things in play i don't know you know it's you know, you know what i'm saying no no yeah it's, it's it's yeah it's more emotional so like the people can get can get to know us better and who we are and like our lives and they can actually like interact with uh, us because we're talking about us but they may and, like, not know what to expect stuff. you know exactly yes but the structure is hard because like it was sporadic and it was um just hard to track on those yeah i, I agree with that and I don't even know if much of that's going to change, but we are going to we, we've we've changed the naming convention at the very least. Um, so now instead of just like episode eighty six, episode ninety two, episode whatever, um, we're going to have seasons now, and they're going to be based around magic sets. So this uh, we're we're late into the season right now. We're we're late into the Rivals of Ixalan season, but we're going to call this season Ricks Rivals of Ixalan, and it's episode one. Um, and so every season, so next next season will be season Dominaria Dom or whatever. And then episode one, you know, we'll start with that. And every oh, every Dom? season is going to, what? Am I going to Adam and Eve? What? You said season Dom. What does that mean? Dom. What is, what is Dominatrix? Domination? Adam and Eve is a, is a adult store? Oh my God, really? This is where you're going with this? <laughs> yes. Oh God. We have to. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe, I can't believe, I can't believe you didn't get it. No, I, I didn't. I was, I was like, all right. This is yeah, right. I just I think, I don't think that's not funny. Um, okay. Go ahead. So, Sorry. Uh, yeah, season season Dominaria will be episode one. The the seasons will all start with our set review, so you'll know exactly uh, when a season starts. So if you're like, hey, I'm looking for, uh, you know, the set review, it's going to be the beginning of season Dominaria. Or, you know, what have you. So, we're only going to do main magic sets. We're not going to do, like, supplemental sets because that would be a little bit, you know, a little weird. But you can then you can tell, like, hey, if uh, this episode came... Or, you know, if this set came out, Iconic Masters for... Or Iconic... Whatever. Magic 20, 20, 20, 25 year anniversary set. Whatever. I don't even know what that... I yeah. honestly don't even know what that set's called. The J set. The they'll sell J the set. The J set. So, if that comes out and... You want to know what we thought about it? You'll you'll know when to look. Like, oh, it came out during Dominaria, so you can you can look then or whatever. So um, we can still talk about. It. We'll obviously still talk. About, we'll still talk about those sets, but they just won't be seasons. Yeah, they'll just be in the season that they came out in. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, as far as illusions on AGG, Robert, um, if you if he he wants a five dollar tier and something cool to go along with it, if you guys have suggestions for five dollar tiers, let us know. Um, the problem with giving stuff out, like, hey, if you subscribe for $5, we'll give you, a, a, you know, 10 stickers or something, is that once you get the stickers, your incentive to keep subscribing at that level is gone, right? So we want something that's going to incentivize you to subscribe episode after episode to make sure it's worth your time, worth your money. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions, as, as usual, let us know. Um, what, if, what if we did, like, a, uh, a some sort of tier where, where someone can give us, like, a card to build around and for like 20 minutes of the podcast or a section of the podcast we just try to we try to build we try to build around it on the podcast just so people can see like a brewing process or something i, I see i i like that or but no. i but i my, my only concern is like podcast what it, it, it appears too much the podcast. well because 20 minutes or, an episode per person what if there's like if there's three of them per month or per episode because it's five dollars per episode right or you know we 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 charge by well i mean by episode yeah but yeah, but what if this one was was more? Like, what if like this tier was like a special, a special tier, like a higher tier? Possibly. So that so that it would have to like, be limited. We have to be like, oh, well, you know, we'll five talk about or whatever. It. So. Right. right. We, we can talk about it off. But the point off, is off. that it's very hard coming up with stuff like that when you're not. We don't have like a a tangible product, you know. So I don't yeah. know. Either way, um, five dollars in tier includes hair strands. Robert said that's a pretty interesting one. Um, hair yeah, you know, like we each give, we put one hair strand in an envelope each month and then send it. Oh, wow. Oh, can I get it? How about they pay for my hair extensions? Um, so get like, well, they could do that, but you know, 
that's up to you. How you spend your 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 pledges is up to you, my friend. <laughs> so that's you know I can't you know they can't maybe, maybe some mustache extensions. Okay, well. That's fancy. This is this is yeah. This is this is freshly brewed, guys. We're welcome back. <laughs> um, so wow, there's been a lot of things going on in the past like week and a half. This has been an exciting week and a half, I would say. Yes, we have Jace and Blood Raid Elf unbanned, and it's crazy. But what I've been hearing from everybody is obviously, oh my god, Jace is too powerful. Please ban him. So, uh, yeah, but it's what so I'm, hilarious. But, but what I'm seeing is Blood Raid Elf is having more of an impact. I than Jace. That's exactly what I said. I've been playing modern this past week. And every time someone played a Blood Braid Elf, they would be like, uh, Lightning Bolt your Jace, attack you for three. And I'm just like, oh. Or I'll play Jace and I'll brainstorm on an empty board and they'll be like, all right, Blood Braid Elf, attack your Jace and kill it. Play a then do five, else. six Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I was like, yeah. that seems better. Yeah, I've seen, yeah. But like the work I've, you have to do. I haven't played enough with it. What's up? Good. I haven't played enough with uh, the, the, new, the new Jace modern format yet, obviously. It just came out. Um, you play more Magic Online than I do, a lot more. So you know more than I do as far as Magic Online. But just looking at like the modern 5.0s, there's obviously Jace decks, and there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of Jace decks in the beginning. But I feel like over time it's gonna die down. Uh, and I I personally believe that um, Blood Braid will probably which should, should make more of an impact than Jace because he, he's much easier to include 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 in his deck, in your deck. Where Jace you have to like almost build you have around. to build around right exactly like if you play a Jace yeah. on turn four in modern like. The thing I've, been, I've begun, begun to realize is that if you play a Jace on turn four in modern, like it's not going to survive very, very long. Like you have to be able to like protect him. You have to you have to be able to uh, keep up counter spells, stuff like that. So yeah, like and Jace again, like, like like you said, Jace isn't being introduced into standard. He's being introduced in, in, in modern, a format where like yeah. dying early is is what a you do. Thing. It's what you do. Yeah. Like and people yeah. and then this is the thing we've I've been talking about like the past week. I'm like people are playing turn three Carns. Why does a turn five or six Jace scare you? Like it's really weird to me. I agree. I mean, I, I'm actually excited for Jace. I like, oh yeah, I love Jace... it. Even if it's not great, like I think it's still a great addition to the format. It's just, I think as many cards should be unbanned and legal as possible. I I agree, and also this is this is worth testing too. Like let's say they do, let's say maybe they do ban him in like a year or two. At least, at least people can be like, "Hey, at least we tried." Like, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think Jace is here, here I, to stay. I, I have, I see no indication that this this card gets banned again. Like, it's not dominance. <laughs> like, it's not a power. It's not yeah. like the brokenest card ever. I just hope, like, even even becomes even becomes a little dominant, or maybe makes instead of instead of having like you know twenty decks, we have fifteen decks. I don't think it's the case, but let's, let's say that happens. Even if that happens, that's even that's better for some people too. Like, there's pros always complain about not not all pros. The diversity, yeah, like too many too many yeah. decks, right? Like, because yeah. you can't prepare against a field that large. Right, right. But the point so. is, like, I, the card itself has to be inherently broken and format warping in order to be banned. And I don't think it is. I don't think there's. I don't think it's doing damage to the modern format. No, I, I don't either. Oh, speaking of. Uh... Speaking of Jace, I guess, and Pro Tours. Right. Um, my friend actually won at PPTQ. Right. In the in the apparently the RPTQ is a team one. Yep. Right. And he can bring me. He's gonna bring me along. Who's your Who's your friend? Uh, Joe Herrera. Yeah, you can bring me as your third. We can. You and I can both both play. Team up. Yeah, with all Joe three of us. He's he's already invited. Are you gonna fly all, all the way down here? Is that what you're gonna do? For an RPTQ with, with where we can team together? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh man! Well, he's already he invited me and he invited uh, Trayu. I don't know who that is, so you can probably uninvite him. I think it'd be fine. Oh no! Sorry, buddy. Sorry, <laughs> you're out, buddy. Oh man, he's gonna he's easily mad at you now. He's gonna comment on the section like, Frank, why are you being so akushi? Yeah, but the thing is, I'd be I'd be playing in the RPTQ, so I guess you know that's life, right? <laughs> well, how about this? I mean, if you win, it's crazy too, because like if you win. The whole team qualifies, right? Yeah. And then that team, if they want... Wait, if you win the RPTQ with a team, do you have to team up with people already qualified for the Pro Tour? Right? If you win the RPTQ or... with your team, your team is qualified for the Pro Tour, right? Well, no. I, th I think all three be qualified for the Pro Tour. But you don't have to team want... with the same people? Yeah, yeah, I don't think you have That's to. That's interesting. I don't know. See, I don't keep track of stuff like that. And everyone's like, hey, are you, are, are you qualified are, are for we... the Pro Tour? Did you play in the Pro Tour? And I'm like, I don't care about stuff like that. Like... Well, I think the thing also the thing is too like if you qualified as a team, I, I don't know why you want to play as a team. Like you right, you're like all right, thanks a lot, guys. See you later. <laughs> yeah, that's not good cool. games. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's not cool. I, I, I want to, yeah, if you as a team, you might as well play as a team because obviously we play well together. So. Right, exactly. And yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, but back to back to the Jace. I'm looking at the the uh, MTGO five hour, five hours five hour results for today, which is February twentieth. And there were definitely games where like I would play Jace and then I would brainstorm for like six turns in a row, but like those are few and far between. Yeah, I'm like I've gone through five deck lists. Only one has two Jaces. All right, uh, six only seven. Okay, so I have ten deck lists, only two are Jace deck, or two have Jace in them. That's not a not lot. <laughs> no. I'm looking. I'm waiting. I'm checking. I'm. Are we on? Are you just on like daily MTG on the deck list there? Yeah, man. Like, I have like fifteen. I have, I, have, I have like fifteen. There's like two two Jaces. All right, there's three decks now with Jace in them. Oh, here's a uh, a like a a Splinter Twin deck with four Bounding Crassus, two Kiki Jikis. Yeah, that's weird. And it has two Jaces in it, so yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know, just, man. Like that one just playing as value. There's even a blue yeah, black like, control list here that doesn't even have Jace. It's got six Lilianas before it has a single Jace in it. That's that's funny because Jace was yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I mean, like the thing is, like, uh, yeah, someone said, uh, guys, not sure where you are in the new unbanning discussion, but I just played a green white slash slash red black cocoa list, basically green white cocoa with Bloodbraid Elf and Tide Hollow Skuller. It was really good. Yeah, so in yeah. those decks, Bloodbraid Elf is just collected company five through eight, right? Yeah, it's just basically. another way to get two creatures. So I don't know. Um, is Jace infinite on Magic Online? As, he, as much as he's on paper? Or he less? A week. So, like, four days before he was unbanned, Jace was, like, 11 tickets. Uh, he's been between 60 and 90 in the past okay. a few days. So, um, it's very interesting because if I bought 10 Jaces at, like, 100 tickets, I would have made about $1,000 on Magic Online, which is pretty hilarious. Jesus. It's so weird looking back on stuff like that. Because you're like, wow, that, that's a real regret. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, but okay, but looking through here, like there's like let's say like there's like thirty deck lists, like five of them have Jace or something, and that's like that's fine, and that and that's that is that's even like that's the best people just including Jace in any deck possible because they're just trying to play Jace. I imagine in like two months this will die down a bit. Oh, 100 percent, especially when he's like yeah. a two of in a couple decks in modern, like you know, like yeah. there's no deck in modern that's gonna be playing four Jaces, like. There's cards like. I don't know about that. I think there'll be at least one or two. I think there'll be a, like true controllers will play a four Jaces. Dude, having your hand think... clogged with Jaces is just so rough in modern. It can be rough, but I think there's some decks that just do that to do one four Jaces. But they're but they're like totally totally control. Like they're like blue white control or Grixis control, and like they're like they're all about Jace. Maybe, but like, like have to be all about Jace. yeah, I guess so. I guess if it's like your win, like your quote unquote win condition, but yes, yes. still like yeah, I mean. It seems rough. Like you don't want cards like you don't even want to like cards like cryptic command clogging up your early hands. You know. Yeah, yeah. It becomes like it becomes weird because obviously Jace Jace fights with the cryptic command slot, and Jace really wants you to play Supreme Verdict as well. So like your 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 four drops your four drops can become almost clogged. Like you want you want three to four Jaces. You want like two two to three Verdicts and like like two to maybe three cryptic commands like. That's a lot of four drops. It's a lot of four that's drops, like, yeah. That's so slow, yeah. Uh, Zamboni Thug in the chat said, I've been watching a lot of rough J streams. You can't add it to a bad deck and make it good, but you can add it to the strategies that want to trade one for one and refill, and for what it's worth, they'll make those decks better. I agree with that completely, actually. I tried to play it yeah. in a Sultai list uh, last Wednesday, and it didn't really work that well, uh, but I played it in a, bl a blue-black control list on Monday, uh, which you guys can check out on YouTube, uh, slash Frank Lepore, and a little plug there. Um, and it worked out great. Like, we went 4-1. And uh, Jace definitely pulled his weight, but you can tell it wasn't like he wasn't like winning the games for me, you know. Like he would just refill my hand. It was I, I felt like it was almost just as good. Like I feel like there were times where Treasure Cruise or like Thirst for Knowledge would have been just as good, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. you just want that initial bump of like give me a couple more cards and then keep moving forward. Yeah, and, and yeah, it puts it in your deck. Like, I'm sure it's obviously. I'm, I'm not saying Jace is worse than this card, but I'm I'm sure in some scenarios, Glimmer Geniuses can be. I as, will agree with you. 
Yeah, you will not I, and find I, I'm, not, I'm not saying Gloomer is better than Jace, guys. I'm just saying, like, let's say in a turn, like, let's say you're in a deck playing in instant speed. Um, in a turn, like, you're holding up cryptic. You're holding up cryptic command. Your opponent plays around. Your, your opponent plays around cryptic command because they know you're holding, holding up four mana. I'm like, okay, well, since you played our cryptic command, I'm gonna punish you now by, by playing Glimmer and just like, or whatever. Yeah, that's or, the thing. And I even yeah. I even said that I, I was I said like, I would rather my opponent tap out for a Jace on turn four, so I'm free to do whatever I want, than tap out for then then not tap out and pass with four mana up for cryptic command because that just feels so much worse to me. Yeah. And the other thing is like. Yeah. People are like, well, why can't they unban Splinter Twin? And I'm like, because Jace is actually so much less powerful than Splinter Twin. Well, also, does, like, Jace gives you the sense of, like, the game, the game is just done. I know sometimes it is done. Like, like if your opponent's one for one to you and you have no hand, and then he... The oh, yeah, but that's, Jace like, on turn eight field. or nine. Like, that's yes, not turn but you, four. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, at that point, they've worked for it. At that point, right. like... At that point, it's, it's not Jace that's killing you. Like, it's, it, could, it could be anything. It's a luxury for you to get to turn nine in, in modern, dude. If you're at turn nine in modern, like, that's the late game. You are you should be grateful that you survived this long. Yeah, it's basically, like, turn nine against Lantern. Like, if, if it's turn nine or ten against Lantern, like... The game, the game should already Jace, be over. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas, like, Splinter Twin, I'm like, if you tap out on turn three to play your guy, and then they tap out on turn four to play their Jace, you're fine. You got a guy on board. Yeah. If you tap out on turn three to play your guy, and then they tap out on turn four to play Splinter Twin, you're dead. That's the difference. Yeah. Like, one of those and decks you I'm, can tap out against, the other one you can't. The only thing I'm, the only thing, the only thing I'm scared of about Jace, and I'll say it, is, like, uh, I'm scared of, like, Storm decks or decks that are de 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 degenerate playing Jace, like, Grishel Brand, like... Out of the board, like okay, well, now I'm gonna slow How down. How would they ever cast that though? I mean, I think Storm could like play like two Jaces in the sideboard against like grinding decks to like, um, basically attack a different access. Yeah, but the grindy decks like just bring in infinite like counter spells, and they already have creatures and stuff to like deal with stuff like that. So I don't, I just but like Jun, like Jun, like cut some some number of obviously not all, all its removal, but like um, you're still gonna blubbery like, elf. I don't know. That doesn't scare me yeah, very much. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Oh yeah, maybe, I'm not saying you're I, wrong I by any means. Yeah, but I actually remember people, people did that with Ascension and Standard. Remember, like there was a Ascension deck with like Time Warp, and Power Masters, Pyro Masters Ascension. I do remember Power Masters Ascension. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And those decks like brought in Jace as a Plan B or something. Um, what else were we gonna talk about? What else happened? Oh, your deck. You played. Oh, you, this... Ali, and Trazi played a deck to a top four of the Classic this weekend. Did you not? I got third place. Did you play in the Open? I did. I played Mono Blue Tron in the open. I, I I tried to listen to Robert Wright never again. Um, played Mono Blue Tron. But apparently, apparently the only person that can play Mono Blue Tron is Shock Koopa. So. Yeah, that seems to be the case. So yeah, uh, yeah interesting. There's uh, someone in chat who uh, literally Frank hates gut. Frank loves gut shot. Um, literally always trying to get me to play Mono Blue Tron every every single every single week every single time I stream, and. Yeah. Um, yeah, his name is Luke, and like he he literally is not here at the moment. But he 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 spoke like he's he was the first person in the chat to say, "Oh, freshly brewing Blue Tron, nice." Uh, and then he hasn't <laughs> said anything since because he's left. But that's I think that's pretty hilarious. So, I, I no Blue like Blue Tron is like it's uh, don't get me wrong, it's a good deck, but the amount of work you have put into it, like to win, is so much harder. Like like there's one there's one scenario where I had to like crack a map to get to Lor Teleria West. To transmute Claria West for walking ballista, so I can walk in ballista to kill this creature. The next turn, I can get Tron and then pump it all, pump, pump it all into walking ballista, so I can kill your, kill your board and live. And it's like my brain like. I, can I just like, cast a Karn right. instead? Can I just cast an Ulmog? Uh, yeah, it, it, they don't even play Tron. Like it's weird because that deck does not want Tron turn three. Like like you basically want to go like Tron. Yeah, you want like islands, map, islands, islands. Island. Yeah, you want to get Tron like turn four, turn five, like. You want you need a blue source more than your Tron land. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's weird because it's kind of like a control. It's it's the complications of a control deck mixed with the complications of a Tron deck. Yeah, it's yeah. And that's it's what you have. It's basically a two player deck. It's basically a two player. Yeah, deck. I can agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, anyways. So let's go over your list. Ollie played right, a, me, a what? What are you gonna say? I'm, I'm gonna post it. In, I'm gonna post it in chat. Okay. If you let me. Ollie played a really weird four color control deck. Um. For uh, the SCD, the SCG Classic this past weekend, he made third place, so top four. Uh, creatures, you have three creatures in the deck: two Gonti and one Tetsamok. Yes. Any any comments on these guys? 
Uh, yeah. I did yes. Not, I, I did not like. I did not like uh, Tetsumok, actually. He was not good. Enough. I thought the same oh. thing. I played a deck just this. I played the. Um, I played the. There's a black white control list that I, I played, and it went up on Saturday, and uh, I I thought the same thing. I had Tetsumok, and I was like. I always wanted to kill their creature instead of like putting a prey counter on it and giving them another attack and then casting this guy. I always just wanted to kill yeah. the guy instead. Yeah, he was, yeah, exactly. He was like, he was, for me, he was always like a seven drop, eight drop, nine drop. Right. And, and that's not bad. Like, like if you go like, you know, on turn 10, if you go like prey, 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 six drop, like basically Ulmog, kill four creatures, that's great. But the thing is, this deck is also already. They'll never have four creatures out. If they have four, four creatures out, you're, you're probably just you're, Yeah, you're doing it wrong. Exactly. That was the thing. I, I yeah. realized there were never enough creatures out. Like, unless you could also, like... So here's the thing. Even if you start on, like, turn three, you're like, all right, turn three, I'll put a prey counter on this guy. Turn four, I'll put two prey counters on your guy. That means they're surviving till, till turn six. You're dead. Yeah, and it, yeah exactly. Yeah. This is what I've realized as well, which is really interesting. Yeah, so anyways, the Gauntys were, were fine. They're, 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 they're nice roadblock, and they've obviously... They quote quote draw card. Gonti is like one of my favorite cards in in standard right now. Dude, I love him. I love his name, Gonti. Lord, Lord of Luxury. He he blocks everything. He's got a, a a three three toughness, which is so much better than two in, in formats like this. I mean, he's he's dripping in finesse, and it don't make no sense. And he just draws a card. He draws any card from your opponent's deck. You know, it's true of, of four. And I, I like the fact that if you kill him, he you just, still get to play the card. Still, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right. All right, so I'm also playing two Planeswalkers. Angrath the Flame Chained and Vraska. Vraska's pretty obvious. Uh, what about yeah, Angrath? What was your thought there? I thought, Angrath, I thought Angrath would be really good against, like, all these grinding decks. And, like, this deck, like, sometimes, he, sometimes, sometimes opponents are afraid to overextend, so they hold cards in their hand. This way, I was able to attack their hand and force them to play on the board, and I can attack them to two different angles. Now, first I was playing two, then I was playing one. Actually, Angrath is the only red card in my deck. Um, but after... This was like my first. It's gonna sound funny. This is like my actual first t big test run with a deck at an event. I did not expect to do so well. Yeah, because I know you. That doesn't sound funny. <laughs> I didn't expect to do so well because I feel like the, the deck had a lot of a lot of uh, things that need to be changed. Yeah. And one is to cut Angrath completely, and also to remove the red sources from the deck, because um he, he's good, but he's not worth the red splash. Main deck. Okay. Interesting, which is funny because like, like I said to you, I said to you earlier, I was like, I love when you play cards like Angrath and, and Tetsamok in your deck. And then I hate when you realize they're not good enough. Yeah, because it's like, it's so like, uh, you know, the, the theory, the, the idea behind the podcast is playing these obscure cards and being a fan of these obscure cards. And then, you know, us building around them or playing with them. And then like, we realize, oh, they're not that great. That's unfortunate. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, he's like, he's good, but he's like, not worth he's. He hurts the mana base. He's not worth messing with the mana base, right? Agreed. Yeah. I mean, you do have uh, you don't have uh, you have Gift of Paradise and Hour of Promise. Yeah, I do, I do, and, and I have like five red sources, but I think that end up or four red sources. And you have a little Anyways, a spicy it, land down here that you could always use. Yes, Cascading Cataracts. <laughs> so your spells are as follows. I'll go over the the basic ones first, and then we can go over the more the more interesting ones. Four Fatal Push, four Doomfall. So those are pretty standard, right? I mean, like Doomfall is for yeah. Doomfall isn't super standard, but it it is a, it is a card that's in standard and it's pretty versatile. I, I think I think the thing of Doomfall two is like, man, I when I first saw Doomfall, I was like, oh, this is too many, four is too many. But then you, then then you play it and you're like, no, four, I, I want four. It does like, it I does yeah. The, the fact that it can hit hand or creature and it also exiles is is so very big, good. so important. Yeah. Um. And then you have four Vraska's Contempt, which is pretty standard as well. I think this is a card that people have been going up and up and up on. Like, I'll play two. I'll play three. I'll play four. Four is just, I think four is where you want to be. It's literally the same thing as Heroes Downfall. It, people it, except two. it exiles the creature and it also gains you life, which is both huge. Yeah. No, but people, the same thing as Heroes Downfall. They played two. They played three. Then, like, halfway in the season, like, okay, win four Heroes Downfall in every black deck. Just play four Heroes Downfall. Yeah. I agree. It's never dead. Like you, if it is dead, you're in you're in great shape, right? Like the biggest yeah. problem you want to have is that you have no target for your Vraska's contempt. Yes. Um, yeah. Four hour of promise and one never return. Those are the basic ones. Um, the most the most interesting inclusions I think are two battle at the bridge, two moment of craving, and two masterminds acquisition. What do you think about that? Yes. Yes. I'll let, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but fast, I think two is a little. I mean, I guess that's kind of standard. Oh, that was an enchantment. Sure. I didn't go. Um, I have the enchantments uh, in separate. Oh, sorry. No, you're, sorry. you're good. You're good. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah, so um, you said Mastermind. Yeah, Battle of the Bridge is just fantastic. Like, you, you, you wouldn't think it's that good. But in a ramp deck, 
Like people were 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 just thinking, about, hey, let's play Torment of Hellfire. Well, the thing is, like, Battle of the Bridge, first of all, kills a creature, and it makes you not lose. And if you know anything about my decks, I try not to lose. Yeah. My decks try not to lose, then win with, win with anything else. Like, a token, I don't care. He does try not to lose, die. guys. That is his goal. <laughs> it's true. I, like, basically what I'm trying to say is, like, I'm, I'm not trying to win. I'm not trying to, like, Torment Hellfire you, then, like, Ribbons you. I'm just trying to live. And if I live, you will, you'll, you'll, I'll eventually kill you with something. And Battle kills, like, the Hazaret. It kills the gods. It kills Bronus. Yeah, the, the negative X, X, negative X. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Do you have anything um, valuable to improvise, or do you just hard cast it? Uh, you can improvise the compass, which is okay. I know. It's, yeah, that's cute. It happens like turn around turn five. Like let's say you, you turn two compass, turn three you can you can like uh, or like like one game I was able I was like, like I played like compass on turn five and then improvised for like three to kill a creature. How often do you find you yourself know? mastermind in acquisitioning for something in the sideboard rather than the main deck? Like. 90%. Really? So, okay. Um, let's get back to that in a second. Uh, the other the other artifacts and enchantments in the deck are two thematic compass, one Argyle's Bloodfast, and four Gift of Paradise. Gift of Paradise seems pretty obvious. There's been a yeah. slew of, like, multicolor ramp decks in standard, all of which use four Hour of Promise and four Gift of Paradise. That's, like, yeah. your central package. Some of them also use Spring to Mind, uh, yes, yes. which you don't seem to have. No, I don't have spring. Do you mind. feel like I, you have I'm enough? Like yeah. Do you feel like you have enough three mana ramp cards? Well, the thing was like with spring to mind, I'd have for more basics. And I felt like to make like more like it's weird. Obviously, spring to mind is a good card because you can like cast mind later and draw cards. But playing less basics means my mana base is has more powerful lands that can more powerful utility lands. Right. And also the life yeah. gain is very relevant. And being able to cast like. Two, like uh, having to access to two one color. Oh, I agree. With you. I agree that four gift is yeah. a given. I'm just saying, in addition to that, like people are running oh, like four oh, gift, three you. spring divine. So you have seven cards that ramp you on turn three. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think that's better if you, if you have like a bunch of like. I think that's, that's usually approach decks, right? Because they're casting like, like seven drops all the time. Like I'm not doing that. Like yes, my, my and like sandworm so convergence and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, they have all that stuff main deck, and I don't have that stuff main deck. Speaking of your lands. Yes. Looks like your lands are one Arch of Arazka, which I'm a big fan of. Four Blooming Marsh, three Canyon Slow, so you can cycle. Four Desert of the Glorified, which is an interesting inclusion, so you can cycle those. Yep. Uh, one Dragon Skull Summit, one Field of Ruin, one Forest, one Hashep Oasis, four Ifner Deadlands, so tons of deserts, one Scavenging Grounds, three Swamps. Um, so you're cycling. You have actually seven lands that cycle, which is nice. And you have, uh, looks like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten deserts. Mm -hmm. That's a good amount. And one Cascading Cataracts, which I saved for last because this is the most interesting inclusion in the deck. Cascading Cataracts is the Amonkhet Indestructible Rare Land that you can add a colorless mana to your mana pool. Or you can tap five and it to add five mana in any combination of colors. This is interesting. Go over this thing because this thing is a really interesting inclusion. Okay, so Cascading Cataracts um, is just, it's very powerful to 2 drop for mid late game with our promise. The reason being is because it allows, it allows your Masterminds actually to get cards every sideboard that you wouldn't normally, normally play. Be able to cast. Right. Yeah. And what's unique about this card is people think that you pay five and it filters into Ruberg. It doesn't. It, uh, you can make red, says, red, red, black, add, black. Yes. Yeah, or, it doesn't add, yeah. It doesn't add rainbow. It adds a. Uh, Whatever you want. Five mana in any combination of colors. Yeah, you, you, you can do like white, 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 red, red, or whatever. Yeah. So, and that's important for a certain sideboard card. Um, also, being indestructible usually isn't that relevant, but it can be against people that are playing like four filter ruin. Like sometimes blue black control will try to feel like you go to gift paradise to one of your lands, they'll respond, they'll filter ruin it, or later they'll filter ruin your a land that's been gifted. Well, if you want, you can just gift your Paradise your Cascading Cataracts and you can't kill it because it is indestructible. Yeah. I actually had one opponent, yeah, in the entire switch where I, he tried to kill my Cataract with a Field of Ruin and was sad. I basically got to ramp again. Just get, I basically got to get to That's get, actually get pretty to get sweet. Land. Oh my god, yes, because Field of Ruin doesn't get countered when you sacrifice it. It just says destroy target land. You and your opponent may search for a land. So you're like, all right, let me go search for a land. Yeah, and then the land yeah, just doesn't get destroyed. <laughs> it, it doesn't counter the ability because it has indestructible. It just doesn't get destroyed upon resolution. Yeah, which was pretty big deal. Uh, so basically, after like after turn eight or seven or whatever, like people can't ever um, 
cut you off, cut you out of color if you get this land. Yeah, because it's indestructible, and you can just no matter what they do, you all have you always you have put your yeah. You can put your gift of the colors. your gift of paradise on there. Yep. So the yep. sideboard, these are the cards you can look for with uh, with Masterminds Acquisition, or you can just, you know, board into them in the old-fashioned way, which is kind of boring. Three Duress, one Silent Gravestone. Uh, cards in Graveyards can't be the target spells or abilities. You can exile it and exile all cards from Graveyards. One Wildest Dreams, which is interesting. One Moment of Craving, three Natural Eyes. Uh, one Lost Legacy, one Yehenny's Expertise, one Carnage Tyrant, and finally... One oh, actually not finally because the SCG yeah. list was <laughs> yeah, missing two cards, which is hilarious to me. Yeah, one Zakama Primal Calamity. What were the other? What were the two missing cards you had? Uh, Nicol Bolas Planeswalker, which is also a huge card, and uh, Conqueror's Galleon. Yeah, both of those are amazing. How they left those two off is insane. So the missing cards for those who are are, are checking the list online, or uh, I'm not sure if the link you had was updated. Uh, it it is it is, but um. It's funny because the Nicol Bolas on okay. there is the creature. It's not Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh. It's just Nicol Bolas. Oh, my God. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. All right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the missing cards were, were one Conqueror's Galleon, which is a super interesting card. Uh, that card is absurd. If, it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if you ever transform this card... You, 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 Are you concerned with the fact that you don't have a ton of ways to flip it? Like, one of your only ways to flip it is, like, having making sure you're too... Zombies from Hour of Promise survive. Our two zomboys. Your zomboys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The ways to flip it, obviously, they're very niche. So it's not main deck. You can wish for it, and if you have, then like then you flip it. But yeah, two two zombies or one zombie and one Haship Oasis is enough. Um, but yeah, it's very hard to flip. But in this deck, if you flip this card, the game is over. The game, like, you it's you're not losing. It, it, when I card. first saw this card, it reminded me of Staff of Domination. Yeah. Um, yeah. Conqueror's Galleon, for those that don't know, I, I lost the thing. All right, give me one second. Conqueror's Galleon, the options on that, it says when it, when it attacks, exile it at the beginning of combat, at the end of combat, then return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. It is, uh, has crew four. It is a 210. So pretty <laughs> sizable. Like you, you can't really block it with a bunch of guys and just kill it in combat. You, it's going to flip, I think. Yeah. Um, and the backside says... Uh, you, it's a land, obviously. It's Conqueror's Foothold. You can tap it to add a colorless mana. Two and a tap to draw a card and discard a card. So two, two and a tap to loot. Four and a tap to just draw a card. And then six and a tap to return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Like, having this land on board is just insane. Like, it's such a such a huge advantage. Oh, yeah. Like, regrowing Vrath's Contempt against some is game over. Uh, regrowing, like, Duress's. Every turn, balls, no it's... less. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like it's like having, um, it's basically it seems like having a, a, an academy ruins, but for any card, not just artifacts, and it goes into your hand rather than your top of your library. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. It's pretty huge. It's it's yeah, uh, and what's funny too is this is not relevant, but the card the card is it isn't even legendary, but yeah. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Isn't the land part isn't legendary? It's not. No, yeah. You have multiples up if you want. That's interesting. Kind of I mean, you only have one in the sideboard, so that's never going to be yeah, relevant, yeah, yeah. but still. Yeah, it's sweet. It's definitely sweet. Um, but for people say, like, just for, like, yeah, I would cut the red. The deck needs more green sources. I'd also up land count to 26. So if you want to play this deck, um, I'd up land count by one and add more green sources. Ollie sent me an updated list. I'll be definitely streaming it sometime this week, maybe even today. Um, yeah, watch, watch Frank. So if you guys want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. If Ollie's going to post it somewhere, you can... Uh, are you going to post your... It in, you have a Gathering Magic card will come up or are you going to post it in? Yeah, I'll post it I'll post it Friday, but um, that one will be more of a... It's going to be more of a Soul Tide, Soul Tide one, too. Like, I'm actually going to go... So you're I'm just gonna, exploring all, gonna, the, I, all the options. Yeah, I think blue is really... It's almost almost like a shame I don't play it because I think the Scarab God is just too good in ramp deck. But... It's pretty good. Um, yeah. I'll... Feel free to go ahead and play the one I sent you. The updated one of that. Can't you and, just uh, put I'll... like one island in the deck and then just put Scarab God in the deck? Like, is it, do you really need like with Gift of Paradise and Hour of Promise and like Cascading Cataracts and like all these other lands? Like, do you really need oh, that many yeah. blue sources? No, like, I feel like don't. one island Not would better. do it. Yeah, no, you, you, you don't need many. No, that's that's the thing. That's what's great about and, it. And like, as so, a yeah. deck, it doesn't even matter if you don't have a lot of guys in your graveyard. You can just eat theirs, obviously. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, look how silly it was. I freaking added. I had read the deck. For Angrath, like why? But that could easily that could easily because been what do you mean why? Because you wanted to play Angrath because this is I did because that's Angrath. who we are. Yeah, but, Ang- but Scarab God is like obviously the 
busted card in standard, right? That card is like a that card is too good. That card should not be and Grath? speed. Not in Grath, uh, sorry, Scarab God. <laughs> it's like I don't know if that's how that works. Yeah, Scarab God's no, definitely amazing. God. One concern like one concern I would have is that a lot of your cards exile. Like Doomfall and Vraska's Contempt both exile the creature, so I wonder how many creatures you're actually gonna have in their grid and like to, to, to reanimate. I'm sure you will have enough. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out, sure. Yeah. Well, because you don't have sweepers, you just have spot removal, right? Like there's no there's no fumigates here, there's no settle the wreckage here, which is interesting because a lot of the ramp decks and standards so far have been white based. Yes, yeah. This is just this is mostly about just black green. It, if you guys remember, like this is uh, if you guys remember the the, the old deck, the, the, the seasons past deck of old, where you like dark petition in the seasons past and reveal your graveyard and keep killing stuff and kill them with that deck was amazing. Nissa. I was a this big deck fan is of that, like that deck. deck. This deck is kind of like that deck, but instead of seasons past, you have like wildest dreams or conquerors galleon. And um, instead of Dark Petition, you have Master, Mastermind's Acquisition. But do you have the same kind of... Do you feel like you have the same kind of inevitability as that deck? Because uh, that deck yeah, was Seasons I, I, Passing and drawing like six cards and then just getting Seasons Pass back. Um, I, I think you do. Like, I'm, I, I, like when you're able to Mastermind's into, let's say, like, Wildest Dreams late in the game, you can just rebuy your whole graveyard, including Mastermind's Acquisition. This is weird because Mastermind's Acquisition does not exile itself. Like... Yeah. Usually, usually these usually wishes will exile themselves, like glittering wish, cunning wish. This one does not, so you can re, you can definitely rebuy it. Can you tell us about uh, can you, da, 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 Papa Ali? Can you tell us about Zakama <laughs> and the sideboard and how good or bad it was? Uh, Zakama was the, the card I most I tutored for most. That's but did you do it for cool points? Where you're like, no, you know what, there's no, probably the, a better the card, card, but I'm gonna get this nine nine dinosaur and and just really mess you up. No, I want to get both more than Zakama, but Zakama was absurd. She's she's so good. Like she's I, also I, like eight dollars in paper, which is absolutely crazy to me. She's like, no, I think I think the crazy one is Carnage Time. Like, why is that card still so much? I she's don't know. Cards. I think it's because it was so hyped, and now it's like people just don't want to like. No one's willing to part with it for less than like eighteen dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah, which is kind of crazy. Because like, really, that card's not even in main. It's like in zero main decks. It's in the main yeah. deck version that you sent me of the updated list. Yes, yes. So, spoiler <laughs> yeah, alert, guys. Yeah. Uh, the combo is actually insane. Um, again, with, 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 blighted, with, with Blighted, um, not Blighted, Cataract. Cascading, Cascading Cataract. cataract. Wrong Cataract, buddy. Yeah. I, I played both. <laughs> I play all the Cataracts. <laughs> yeah. With Cascading Cataract, like, she just does whatever you need to do. Like, being able to naturalize God Pharaoh's Gift and whatever else you need to uh, kill, like, a, maybe, a, maybe a flying creature or whatever, it's fantastic. Like, there's one game, too, where they're able to attack the comma. My opponent would like block with Hazret, and I would just like bolt their Hazret twice with, his, with 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 her ability, and just still trample over for nine. Ah, oh, because you wouldn't, yeah, because you wouldn't have to assign any damage to Hazret. Because she, yeah, because, because she already had lethal damage. damage. Wow, that's actually crazy, dude. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's she has she has she has vigilance, reach, and trample. Vigilance like, is huge. Yeah, and Reach is Reach too. Like, why does she have Reach? I don't know, I don't know. but I'll take it. Like, I'll take it. I mean, the one thing the one thing I thought was funny that it didn't have haste, but I, I'm like, eh, it doesn't. I mean, whatever. She, she has everything else. Yeah. And also, our Registrar Alpha uh, gives it haste. So it does give it haste. Yeah. So I, that makes sense. Like, I, I can understand why you wouldn't want to give a card haste when it can get haste through, through another rare. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that. Yeah, but she's she's I mean she's the best thing we've had since Ulmog. Obviously, Ulamog's better, but this is the combat I'm telling you is the, the best thing to rip into since Ulamog. I mean, the only problem Ulamog. is the, the three colors, right? But with Cas- like right, we right. said, like with Cascading Cataracts, you just get red, white, green, and you're good or, to go. Or just, one, or just one gift. One gift of Paradise will, will turn it on for you. One gift of Paradise will let you... Really? Will let you, uh, actually, not one. In this deck, it will. Sorry. Because you, you have red already. You need the white. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, right. I was like, but you need... Yeah, because Gift of yeah, Paradise yeah. makes two of any one color. You can't make red, white with that. So right, right, right. Good to know. So yeah, I guess in the, in the updated list, she'll, she'll be a little harder to cast, but usually, usually by the time you're getting her, you should have the right, the right man anyways. Like you'll have two gifts, all you the have right the stuff, so to speak. Yeah. And if not, just get someone else. I think get, we should get, do get this. I think we should do this more each week. We should talk. We should find a deck that we like and we could discuss it. Yeah, I'm down. With, I'm down with that. And I think that that I'll goes like back deck. goes more back to the roots of freshly brewed. Freshly brewed. You know what I mean? Like we can talk about the individual card choices. We can talk about what we might add or subtract. 
And uh, I think that because other ones like when are you guys going to talk some not everyone, but like sometimes I get emails and people are like when are you guys going to talk about decks again? And I'm just like, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I just talk, talk about magic stuff, really. Yeah, I like that, especially with Jace coming up and Bloodbraid being a band. I think it's a good time to, to, to do that. What's a Bloodbraid? A Bloodbraid? It's when you take your hair and you braid your hair with the blood of your enemies. Huh. That's what the people of Jun did. They, uh, they would b- braid their hair in the blood of their enemies. Lore, lore information. See, I was actually, I thought you were kidding, but then I remembered who you were, and I was like, that's probably 100% true. No, I'm, I made that up, but uh, uh, it sounds true. Well, it does. It no, did I mean, sound true. I mean, yeah. Well, once you referenced the I fact that you were the lore that. guy, I was like, oh, yeah. wow, well, he's not breaking that up. That's real. I mean, that sounds legit, right? I, I believed <laughs> it, yes. I 100% believed it. I mean, that, that, that would be, you know what? We'll make it true. We'll tell wizards. Wizards, make Bubber Elves braid their hair in blood. Yeah, they'll, it'll be a, what do you call it? Um, a future thing. A retcon. Yeah, they'll retcon the, the, the history, the storyline. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I should I, I should write uh, lore. There we go. Just hi- hire me to write lore for um, I don't know if being a fan of lore and writing lore are necessarily yeah, the same, same things. I know. Hmm. Not to, not I to know. discredit you. I'm not saying you wouldn't be good at it. I just don't know, personally. No, I mean writing is a completely different different monster than actually like thinking. Yes, one hundred percent. Well, no, then yeah. like then like reading or appreciating, you know. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Um, but like, do me a favor. Do everyone in the chat a favor. Um, if you guys want to, if you want to, want to pledge to the five dollar Patreon tier that doesn't exist yet, uh, that will give you access to Ollie's fan fiction, Ollie's uh, MTG Ollie's lore fiction. fan fiction that he will uh, that he will be writing in the near future. It'll be. Uh... A love story between Jace and um, Vraska. Why are you, don't spoil, bro. Oh, okay, okay. God. And we guarantee you that whatever Raleigh writes will become new canon. So we, you have that. That is the freshly <laughs> brewed guarantee. We'll put that stamp of guarantee, right? Okay. You know, it's because that's that's a real thing. That's a, that's a yeah. That's, that's a way to. All these fiction is just so good that it becomes real. Yeah, I don't see what problem is is really what I'm what I'm yeah. saying here. Great. Um, yeah, on that note, I think we can, we can wrap it up here in about 45 minutes. And uh, we can keep these a little shorter, but like a little under an hour, a little over half an hour, stuff like that. Um, God, I hope you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this this uh, return to Freshly Brewed because it's been a while. And uh, it always feels good. Like Ollie messaged me the other day and he was like, hey, man, we haven't, we haven't talked. We haven't done a Freshly Brewed in a while. And I was like, let's do it then. Let's just do a Freshly Brewed. So here we are. Yeah, I was like, I was like Frank, I miss you, man. I, miss I know. You. And I was like, same, dude. I miss you too. It's you guys are the bromance is real right now. You guys are witnessing right. it. Right. Then, then, then we called him like now we're not, we're not missing a beat. No, it's yeah. Because it's like literally no time. It's, it's, like, it's, it's fantastic. like one of those friendships. Yeah, it's like one of those friendships where like you're you're you're, you're so great that like you guys you guys can like maybe have time. Maybe something happens in your life. And you need like time for yourself or something, whatever. But then like you call each other back. You're like, all right, let's pick up let's pick up where we left off because it did it. We're great. It feels like it. It feels real. <laughs> the magic is real. It is real. And like Ollie wasted no time just trolling me with uh, fake fan fiction that he wrote. Exactly, and I believed it, and he suckered me again. <laughs> oh, I guess. Uh, don't worry, I got some more. Oh, you got later. some more fanfic in the queue. I got some more lore, some actual, some actual lore too. We'll do, we'll do it next time. Okay, I'm in. All right. And of, of course, no freshly brewed to be complete without a little bit of lore, anyway. So yeah, that's just, probably just not going to change. A little, a little sprinkle. Just a, a little just sprinkle. a just a touch, just a pinch of lore. Yeah. Um, is there anything happening between now and next week? Uh, there's a GP map. Jeep Grand Prix Memphis, but I'm not going to that one. Is it standard? Because it is standard. I wish I could go because I want. I really want to go and play this deck. But um, uh, Lily's birthday. Lily's birthday is this weekend, and I'd made plans like a month ago to go to it. So there's no way I can skip that. I can't. I can't, I can't skip my kids. Birthday I, for... I I support that decision. Yeah. I think that is the correct play. Thank you. Oh, the, someone in the chat yeah. said the Brumance. Desert Twenty Four said the Brumance. That's fantastic. Uh, that should be that. That should be the. the... Title. That should be the, the podcast ones. title. The, the, yeah. Oh, the, the we should just change the podcast, podcast to the Brewmance. The Brewmance. Oh I my can, god! Can this is why you need to crowdsource everything. I think crowdsource <laughs> is just the way to go because, like, you just don't have all the answers, right? And if people can lend a, a suggestion, like the Brewmance, good lord, Desert Twenty Four, thank you so much, man. That is fantastic. Well, I like the. Brumance. I'm a fan. <laughs> I am too, man. All right, I'm gonna go change my life now. All right, me too. I'm going to go change my shirt and write Brewmance on the new shirt or my chest, Brewmance. Yeah, we'll just get – actually, we have to get matching Brewmance to hashtag the Brewmance tattoos. Yes, do that. Hashtag Brewmance. I'm in. 
Hashtag brew mans. Can, we should make it a hashtag. Yeah. We should make a hashtag. Just call it. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> Upvote to change it to the brew man. Someone, Catherine Overboard said, "Wow, all right, well, that's yeah. that's 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 settled then, I guess." Uh, I guess we're. I guess we're. I guess that's it. Um. Yeah, so if you guys are watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for the support. Really appreciate it. Be sure to click those like and subscribe buttons and head on over to the Patreon if you want to support the podcast. Let us know what kind of uh, donation tier, reward tiers we could we could add because we're always looking for suggestions on, on what you guys would appreciate. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye, guys.